Hello, Disney cruisers, and welcome back to the DCL community, where we are here to help you plan, prepare, and get excited for your Disney cruises. You guys know me. I'm Rebecca, your host and admin of the DCL community. And today we are so excited to really be diving into some of these hot topic additional things that you might be looking at for a Disney cruise. Some things that you might be wondering, okay, is it really worth the cost? Is it really worth the reservation? And we're going to be sharing what you guys think and what we think. So as you're coming in, please say hello. Let us know where you're watching from so that we can say hi. And Hunter, do you want to go ahead and I'm going to get this loaded in. Um, Hunter, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and what we're going to be talking about today? Yeah. So first, my name is Hunter. I'm a travel advisor. been doing this for nine years. Today, we're going to be talking about, of course, all things Disney Cruise Line because you're on a Disney Cruise Line channel. Uh, but we're going to be talking about the extras on board. Are they worth it? Can we skip it? Um, does it depend on our family? Um, so many different things. So we're going to be talking about adult dining, Bippity Poppity, World Court Tea, Olaf's World Picnic, Concierge, Spa Salon, Rainforest Room, a couple of extras that I threw in there, and then we're going to take live questions. So Rebecca, if you want to go to the next screen, I'll do like a formal introduction. So again, I'm Hunter. I have been planning for nine years. I've been on all, um, all five of Disney Cruise Line ships. 26 cruises. I have kiddos. I've got allergies. So I have a lot of firsthand experience and Disney Cruise Line knowledge that I love to share with my clients. So the reason I love Disney Cruise Line so much is it is the perfect mix of Disney magic and relaxation, right? So you get the Disney Cruise Line customer service. You've got the character meet and greets, the shows, but you've also got the pools, the beaches, really cool ports of call. Um, and some adult only areas. It just, it makes the vacation come together for everybody, all ages. And I just really love that about Disney Cruises. So there's nothing better. It's so true. I agree with everything that you just said, everything. So I um, would love to work with you on your next Disney, Disney Cruise. The best way to get a hold of me is by email. Um, you can also go to my website, which is listed there to fill out a form. Um, or schedule a call with me. And then you can also follow me on my social medias, which we will post this presentation afterwards. And the social media links are hyperlinked. So you'll be able to click on those directly. Yeah. Yes. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to Hunter. She is here to help be that resource in planning your Disney Cruise Line vacation. As you guys can tell, she's got a ton of experience and she is here to help. And her services bonus are totally free for you to use. So that's the link to her page on the DCL community site as well. And let's have so, some of the things that you specialize in. Yeah. So my specialties um, in the Disney Cruise Line niche are family travel. Obviously, I have kiddos. Um, also accessible travel. My husband is an amputee, so we do have to do things a little bit differently than we used to. Um, also allergy travel. My son has nut allergy and my husband has celiac disease, so we are 100% gluten-free. So I have a lot of knowledge on how to navigate those food allergies on board and how to order your meals safely um, if you do have food allergies. And then also we have sales concierge on all the ships. We absolutely love concierge when we are able to splurge for it. Um, so that is another thing that I love chatting with um, potential clients about. Yeah, this is so, so much that she can help with. And again, her planning services are totally free. So feel free to reach out to tap into her expertise. All right, so when a client works with me, the first thing um, they typically do before reaching out is brainstorming when they want to take their trip, whether it's, you know, sometimes you don't need to know the exact date, but maybe um, you have it narrowed down to the season or month you want to uh, take a trip. That's super helpful. Also, um, then the second step would be to contact me um, with one of those methods of communication that we mentioned a couple of slides back. And then the third step is we collaborate together to find the cruise that best fits your family's needs and what you guys are looking for in your vacation. Um, and, you know, I don't just work with Disney Cruises. I work with other cruise lines, all inclusives and other destinations. So sometimes we end up going another direction. Um, and then step four would be the trip research and sending over that proposal. Once you get your proposal, proposal you're going to review it. If we need to tweak and revise that, we can make that happen. And then step six would be to book and start all of the super fun planning. 
Yes, I was going to say that's the best part: booking the cruise and actually getting to plan. And you know what? Um, one through six, it doesn't it doesn't take long to get to step six. You know, if you're motivated yeah. to get a trip book, we can do it in a day. Like it does not have to be a long drawn out process. I know seeing step, six steps it may seem like that, but it really isn't. I was going to say with how quick Hunter is and how much she knows Disney Cruise Line, you could do that all in one phone call if you wanted to. Like this girl, yeah, totally. she knows everything about Disney Cruise Line, like the back of her hand. Um, I just wanted to say, we have so many people watching from everywhere, New York, Arizona, California, so many people joining on Instagram. And I just wanted to say hi, and thank you everybody for joining us. We're going to be talking about all things. Is it actually worth it on board? And, you know, you guys have two Pearl Cruisers and Hunter and myself. And um, just answering this question, yes, her services, um, her services are included when you book with her. So she's here to be that resource. She can help book and Hunter, correct me if I'm wrong. You can help with airlines. You can help with transfers, trip insurance, um, ex what excursions to book. You can do all of that, right? Yes. And I do want to mention that if you don't book with us, um, you are able to transfer the reservation to us if it was booked within the last 30 days and it is not paid in full. And this also goes for placeholders. If you bought a placeholder in the last 30 days, you have to transfer it to an agent within 30 days, even if it's not assigned to a specific ceiling. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. If it is outside 30 days, unfortunately, we would not be able to help you unless you were able to cancel and rebook with us. Yes. I was going to say over the last week with a new batch of itineraries open, I cannot tell you how many people reached out and they have a placeholder and they want to transfer it, but they're past that 30 day window. Do yourself a favor, set a calendar reminder in your phone now for when you get back from that Disney cruise, you're going to be sad and you're going to want to think about your next sailing already. Go ahead and just get that in your calendar now so that you don't forget to transfer it because Disney is strict on that policy. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And I love, I'm so excited right now. I feel like I want to be on board a Disney cruise doing all of these things. Um, but should we go ahead and dive in? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Okay. And you guys are going to have to let us know what you think um, and if you agree with us or not. So all things adult only dining. Hunter, what do you yeah. think? I think it's worth it within certain parameters. So if you're on a three or four night sailing, I don't think so. Um, especially if you're a first time cruiser, um, particularly three nights, like you only have three dining rooms to experience. So I think you should go and experience those three dining rooms. Um, four night, maybe if you want to skip, you know, the theme night, like the Caribbean or Bahamas cruises have that pirate night. That's a popular one to skip. But I really think for first timers, you should just really immerse yourself in that uh, main dining experience and wait until the next time you're on board. Um, the only time I would say that I would maybe go away from that um, response would be on a seven night cruise because you are going to all of those restaurants at least twice, but they do change the menu. So it's just because you're visiting a restaurant two times, the menu is not going to be the same. Yes, that's so true. And the main dining room food is already so good. And for anybody who's maybe a first time cruiser and doesn't know about Disney's rotational dining, can you just explain that super quickly for anybody who might be new? Yeah, of course. So um, Disney Cruise Line does rotational dining. So you are assigned a dining room and each night you go to the specific dining room that you are assigned to and you can see your rotation in your app. And as you move restaurants throughout the cruise, your dining staff moves with you so your head server your server and your assistant server they all move with you so you get to know them um they get to know you it's actually really fun to get to know them um and see them every night so they move with you they already know your allergies and then at so as you move through those dining rooms they're going to be with you and if you make a connection with them sometimes if you go to the adult dining at dinner it's sad that you're not yes. watching at dinner that you night. miss them yeah yes. Oh, you really so do. Um, so I just wanted to point out that as we go through the slides on the um, picture that you're going to see on the left hand side, that poll is what we did two days ago on Instagram. And this is what the Disney Cruise Line community um, voted. So 78% said it was worth it. And one thing I like to know is so there's Palo and Palo Steakhouse, and there's also Remy and Enchante. And those are in the same kind of bracket. And I would say Remy and Enchante, they're a very 
more refined and upscale dining experience. And maybe not, even if you're an avid cruiser like Rebecca and I, it's not something you'll probably do every cruise. Um, personally, for me, it's not. We did it once. We really enjoyed it. It'll probably be a few more cruises before we do that again. Yeah. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Like, even if you are cruising more than once, um, you may want to change it up. So the adult dining um, is offered in brunch and dinner times. And it is an additional cost, like most of these things we're going to be talking about tonight. Yeah. So I was going to say, especially with that additional cost, that's why I would say, like, we love Paulo. Remy was amazing and I would yeah. highly recommend. But if it's your first cruise, don't worry about it. Just enjoy getting to know the ship and the adult dining experiences will be there. Um, now, I know one thing on this, people might be thinking, OK, but I want to I want to try one of these. But like, what do I do with my kids? And Hunter, you're a parent. So how do you kind of navigate you and your husband getting a little date night and what you do with the kids when dinner time comes around? Because, you know, they, they do have to eat. <laughs> yeah. So our kids will typically get room service while we are getting ready in the room um, on our adult dining night. Or um, sometimes my mother-in-law is with us and she'll just go to dinner with the kids in the main dining room. Another option would be go to go up to the pool deck and grab them something from Daisy's Delights or Mickey's back or Mickey's Barbecue, like whatever ship you're on. Um, and an additional option to that is if you have like a 7.30 pallet time, which is about the time we schedule it, and we have 5.45 main dining, you can go down in the main dining room, sit with your kids, feed them in the main dining room, then drop them off in Kids Club and Nursery. Um, so there's plenty of options to still get your kids fed before you yeah. go on Joey, your little date night. I was going to say, your kids will not starve. We promise. No. Um, and I can't agree more. I love this comment from, from Michael. Um, the main dining room food is amazing, right? Like you're not going to get bad food in any of the dining rooms on board Disney Cruise Line, but there's just this updated, like, or upscale elegance that you get with Paulo and yeah. Remy and Ashante. And yes, definitely, definitely worth it for me on this one. Um, Bippity Boppity Boutique. Oh, I can't get over how cute your kids look in these, but what do you think about this one? Okay, so Bibbidi Bobbidi, I think it's a one and done experience. Um, we've offered it to our daughter multiple cruises. She's done it on the cruise line and at Disneyland in California. She enjoyed it full time. Don't get me wrong, she had a blast. Um, but we've offered it again since and she's just not interested. So for me, it's a one and done. And one thing I want to add to that is instead of paying for the um, more expensive packages on board, I recommend bringing your own dress and the princess that you know your daughter's going to want with or your son in the size that you need because there is no guarantee that the ship will have the dress or the style you want in the size you need so that's just oh, my little pro so tip great. um they do have some options for boys um that are not princesses and they include mickey um like captain mickey here um or a pirate um so this one was my son i think he was nine maybe at the time the ages are three to twelve um, and they put them in a little captain's outfit, which you do have to buy there. And they put little like glittery Captain Mickey's in his hair, like on the shell. It was cute. He did enjoy it too. I love that. Yeah, I was going to say, there's just something so fun about seeing the kids dressed up on board. And I, you know, I do think it's worth it to do. I agree with Hunter. It's not going to be an every time thing, but I think when they're little and they love, I like, I'm, from Chicago, we did the whole American Girl Doll Museum experience where you got to dress up and be like your doll. So I just think it's such a fun experience for kids. But um, yeah, definitely not an every cruise thing for us. Either. Yeah. It, and also, I don't want anybody to like panic if they can't get it because it's not a make or break experience. Like I said, like my daughter went on numerous cruises and to the parks multiple times without ever going to Bippity Boppity, um, even when she was of age and she had no clue what she was missing. Yeah, um, and like so I said, she doesn't like to go back. So if you can't get a time slot, one, try what you get on board. Um, but two, it's not going to ruin your cruise. Take your own dress, take some glitter and some hair stuff and throw her hair back in a bun. I was going to say the amount of times parents, I always chuckle when I see this. Parents, they get the whole bippity boppity package, and then their kid immediately just wants to go in the pool and swim. And they're like, "Why did I spend all that money?" So be strategic on when you're um, when you're doing it, and think about your kids too. If they if they're not one to have all the hair and makeup and everything done, this is definitely a skip for them. You know your kids best. Uh, I'm right. excited. 
Oh, concierge. Okay, so yeah. like I said at the beginning, we are a sucker for concierge when we can splurge on it. Um, we've done it on all the ships. We love the lounges. We love that exclusive area. We love the added perks and amenities. But if you can't afford it, there's no reason to break the bank to do it. You're going to have an amazing cruise otherwise. Um, but for those that are interested, um, we love it. Like the picture on the right with our lounge host on that ceiling, like they became like our family. And we have sailed with them more than once, some of those um, hosts. And they really will do anything they can to make you have an extraordinary experience. So in my opinion um, and my husband's, it is worth it. And I think if you see value in the perks of concierge, then it's worth it for you. If you are thinking about sailing concierge on your next Disney cruise, reach out to Hunter, have the conversation. There are perks, but personally for my family, they don't necessarily make sense. Um, I have members in my family who don't drink. So the happy hour every night that's included, that doesn't really have value for my family. My family, I know this is going to be shocking to a lot of people. A lot of my family, we don't drink coffee. So the coffee machine, not necessarily a perk. Um, we don't do a ton of excursions. So we don't need the first, you know, fight at the cabana. So it just, if those are things that are important to you, if you want to have first access to the excursions, if you enjoy having cocktails every night, if you enjoy that private lounge space and that more one-on-one -on -one service, concierge is definitely worth considering. But just personally for my family, I would rather book like two or three more Disney cruises, depending on the sailing. So there's no wrong way to do it. The only wrong way to Disney cruise is to not Disney cruise. I Amen. stand by that. Yes. Oh my gosh, she's so stinking cute. <laughs> All right, so Royal Court Tea. So this is a princess experience that happens on sea days usually or three night sailings that happens on Nassau Day um, where you can take your kiddos three to 12 into a tea party. On, and this is on the Wish, Wonder, um, I'm sorry, the Magic, Wonder, Dream, and Fantasy. And there will be three to four princesses in there. There is a little sing-along show. There's um, little tea sandwiches and pastries and they get tea and they get a little goodie bag. This is a one and done um, for us. I was impressed with the Royal Court Tea experience. My daughter loved it. We were considering doing it again um, on our next one for her. And I just, we just really enjoyed it. It was $69 per adult, and then it was $269, I think, for the kiddo, which is high. Um, she got a, and this is on the Magic two years ago, so it's been a minute, but she got a doll, a little purse, some bracelets, um, an autograph book, a bag. I can't remember what else. There, there were several little goodie bag, or goodies in the bag. Um, and it was really special, but she, like I said, she had been on multiple cruises before she ever did this and she had no clue what she was missing. This is not the only way to see princesses. You don't have to worry about that. So if you can grab it, I think it's uh, worth it on a longer cruise. But if you're on a shorter cruise, I wouldn't try to jam it into your schedule. Yeah. And for me, it's about the price tag on this one. You can see princesses in so many other ways on board. There's plenty of meet and greet opportunities. You can see them in the shows. So for me, I would definitely skip this one. And, and again, there's a lot of value there. A lot of people really enjoy it, but don't stress out if you don't get it. So many other ways to see your favorite princesses. Um, and I was going to, I know you mentioned, you know, kind of the booking it ahead of time. Can you explain how that works? Like, how do you book these sort of things? Is this something you can help with? So when, it depends on your castaway status. So, but if you're a first time cruiser, you're going to be able to book your onboard activities 75 days before embarkation. The booking window opens at midnight. Um, you will log on and you'll be able to book your excursions, spa treatments, adult only dining, um, and add an extra like Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, the Royal Court Tea, um, beverage tastings, um, and there's a few other things. And this is when that would be booked. And these are 
competitive there's a not, competitive is not the right word to use there's a limited amount of spots for all of yeah. these things you know the ship is only so big there's only so many places um but like we've been saying these are not make or break things you're still going to have an amazing cruise with how much is included and if you still want to try for it and you can't get it when you book online go to guest services right when you board and they can get you on the wait list and they'll notify you if you know if they have an opening it's so true. And you'd be surprised how many people cancel last minute. Just yeah. approach it there. So, um, and what about Olaf's Royal Picnic? Well, Olaf's Royal Picnic is the alternative activity on the Wish um, that is not Royal Court Tea. Because I don't have Royal Court Tea on the Wish. So it's Royal, Olaf's Royal Picnic. This is a skip it for me. Um, I'm just going to be really frank with you. The sandwiches were terrible. The pastries were terrible. Um, and... I just, I, I don't see the value in it when dinner on the wish, there's a frozen dinner show. That's literally a show and you see all the same people. So I don't see the value in spending $400 for two parents and a child to go to Olaf's Royal Picnic. Again, there was a bag. Um, she had like an Olaf drawstring bag. It came with a like troll that like folds into a pillow or something, a picnic blanket, um a couple other things i can't remember but i mean they were just little souvenir things that who knows are probably shoved under a bed yeah i just don't see the value and you can see all of those frozen characters in like a sing-along show and the olaf's room picnic is like a sing-along whereas on the dream fantasy magic and wonder the royal court tea is like a show and they don't have that caliber like or a princess show on the ship. So I think that's the value is in those original ships on the Royal Court Tea. I just can't find it in Oral's Royal Picnic. No, that's a great point and um, mirrors my opinion. And I'm curious, we have this question coming in on Instagram. It seems like a lot of things are girlier. What do they have for the boys? So as I, both a boy mom and a girl mom, how, how would you answer that? So for, you can take boys to both of them. Um, the boys at Royal Court Tea will get like a shield and a sword, um, like okay. a more boy styled autograph book. Um, I can't remember. I don't know what other trinkets are. We never did it with my son, but they, I know they get a shield and a sword. Um, and then for Olaf's Royal Picnic, everybody gets the same thing, but they are very gender neutral. Awesome. So you can take them. Um, but as far as extra activities i would say the only more boy and i hate i hate putting a gender on it would be like midship detective agency which is free or goofy sports simulator on the dream and fantasy both of those are on the dream and fantasy um where you can do like a simulation of different sports and there's also a golf one um so i would say those are more geared towards boys although i don't I, mean, I also think those are gender neutral and the the goofy sports simulator is an added cost yes i couldn't agree more there there's so much for every person to do on board regardless of gender um you know kids like what they like and there's definitely solutions and rooms um in the kids clubs there's activities that the families can do that specific kids could do i mean your kids are not going to be bored on a Disney and cruise. I, yeah, and I want to mention this just because we were talking about how The Wish has a Frozen show. The Wish also does a Frozen meet and greet, and then they also do a coronation celebration in the kids' club where they bring in, like, Olaf, I think. Maybe the princess wow. too. But it's listed on the Navigator app. If you see, like, coronation, like, on an Elsa's coronation or something about coronation that's listed in the Oceaneers Club, there will be an activity, and then at the end of it, characters will come in so get your kiddos there you can't go but your kiddos will still have that magical experience i love that and good call a midship, midship detective that is so much fun i feel like people don't talk about it that often but yeah man and is it a blast and the what is it called on the wish the quest magic quest or i think so yes there's and another the one on the wish i cannot think of it but it's a game around the ship it's similar it's a similar concept to midship detective agency where you're going around the ship finding things it's so much games. Fun. And don't miss the finale show for that one because there might be some special guests that appear. It's so fun. So fun. Um, what about spa? 
I am a sucker for a good spa treatment. So for me, it's a yes, it's a worth it. Our favorite is the couple's choice villa. Um, you can kind of see pictures of the outside of the villa. The outside of the villa has a veranda with a jacuzzi hot tub and a day bed. Um, you start on the veranda, do about like 15, 20 minutes out there in the jacuzzi. Well, first they do like a, a foot treatment, jacuzzi, then you go in for a 75 minute massage and then you come back out and you enjoy the veranda for like another 25, 30 minutes with tea. And it's my favorite at sea because then you're just like laying on the veranda with your spouse or your best friend or your mom, whoever you do it with and enjoying the open ocean. So I love it. I love the spa. I've also done pedicures, which I thought were great. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed the spa. I love that. And um, Uncharted Adventure was the name. So thank yes, you for who sent that Adventure. in. Um, and we do have a question. Sorry to detour from the spa for a second, but what are the ages for the Oceaneers Club and Lab? Three to ten. Three and to this ten. is a new change. Um, so three to ten, and three and four year olds are separated into their own little um, group where they have a counselor doing guided activities with them. And then the five to ten year olds have more of a free realm around, but they still do have arranged activities and games and stuff in the club but the kids are they get to make their own decision you know they have autonomy to decide if they want to participate or not love that and then vibe um is the teens 14 to 17 and then edge is the 11 to um 13 and then sometimes you can get a waiver for 10 year olds to go into edge and the nursery is under three but the nursery nursery does come with a cost Yes. And Hunter and I will tell you, put your kids in the kids club. They're going to have a blast. They're going to have so much fun. Yes. Every kid is different, but like we've made some of our best friends, the greatest memories on board in those kids clubs. So just let your kids run around and have fun in all those rooms. Um, and so my take on the spa treatments, I also am a sucker for a good massage, a good facial. I love the whole treat yourself, stand by it. It's so great. Um, one thing I did want to know, and I know people bring this up, is like the upsell that, you, you know, people feel pressured with the additional upsell opportunities that the um, the crew might offer and feeling like people might be pushy. So how do you respond to that as um, as a cruiser as well as a travel agent? Um, I personally just tell them I'm not going to buy anything. I'm not interested. Um, I listen just to be respectful. I mean, they're required to do it. They probably don't even want to do it, but they're required to do it. So I just listen and say, no, thank you. I'm not interested. Yeah. Easy as That's that. It. Yes. Yes. It's simple. You know, it's coming now. You've been warned, but I was going to just say like, that would never prevent me from not going and not booking one. Yeah. And if you guys, if you're not following Hunter on Instagram already, you need to be, go back and look at her experience in the couple's villa. Yeah. It looked amazing. It sold me on it. Like I, I'm going to do it on my next cruise. I have to because it looked that good. So definitely do that. Um, and as we're going to the next one, um, just answering this question, you do not need reservations for the kids club, only for the nursery. I saw that question come in. Oh, and before we go to that one, um, have you done a massage on Castaway before? I have not. I went and looked in the massage cabanas, which are on the Serenity Bay on the adult beach, but I have not done it because I love to do them on the sea day. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Anywhere you get any of the spa services done, they're going to take great care of you. Okay. And it's the same staff coming off the ship going yeah. to the spa or the, the Serenity Bay um, massage cabanas. That's so salon treatments, um, it varies by ship, but on the Magic Wonder Dream and Fantasy, the salon is in Census Spa. On the Wish, it is separate. It's in a different location. Um, I did my first salon treatment last cruise a couple weeks ago, and I got like a wash blowout in style. And my hair was so soft. I've never gotten it that soft in my life. Worth it. Um, I thought the cost was very reasonable for a cruise salon. Um, and actually, the salon stylist didn't even try to sell me on anything. So awesome. I loved it. I also got a pedicure, and this was on the fantasy, and like you can't beat those views the the picture in the right um far right that's when i was getting pedicure and i was looking directly across the ocean so Loved relaxing it. Loved it. 
Yes. I was going to say, don't stress about getting your toes done before you leave. Just get them done on the ship. Yes. Schedule it for embarkation day, like before dinner. That's what I did. I went and got a pedicure and got my hair done before dinner. And they got me ready. You know, they just did it for me. And I was relaxing, reading my book. Loved it. Oh, what more could you ask for? Um, And uh, we do have the question, what's the age for the spa and salon? Um, It is 18 and older for the spa. Love that. And do they still have the chill spa for teens? You know, I don't know the answer to that because I don't have a teen. Um, I would have to find out and get back to you. No, that makes sense. I know it's not something that's offered all the time on all the ships, so... Um, now, during COVID, they were giving some leniency um, to the 18 if you were 16 and older, um, but that's when the ships weren't completely full. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they have definitely Let's been see. selling out. Um, but yeah, for me, if you enjoy getting your hair done, your nails done, uh, you know, getting a fresh shave, like a nice fresh shave, um, especially the the places on board the wish, I just sailed on the wish for the first time a couple months ago. And I was just blown away with what is it? Hooks Barbary. And then the Rapunzel tangled salon. tangled salon. Oh my gosh. When I tell you guys, the mirrors are in frying pans. What like the decorations in there, the service in there, it's top notch. If you enjoy, yes. like I was saying, a treat yourself moment, I would highly recommend treating yourself with a visit to the salon or the spa, maybe both. It's your vacation. Um, It's just, there's just nothing like relaxing and getting pampered. But again, if you don't get these, if you don't do these, you're still going to have an amazing vacation and there's still plenty of ways to relax on board. Uh, Should we jump ahead to the next one? Yes. Awesome. Oh, the rainforest room. (laughs) Yes. Let's talk about this one. What is the rainforest room? First of all, So the Rainforest Room is part of Sense's Spa. It has the heated stone loungers that you see. Um, Depending on the ship, it has hot tubs. And then it also has um, their showers with different um, water temperatures, different flows of water. Um, And you can, there's typically three different showers, three to five different showers. And you can go in and they have, um, options to choose and um, it could be like a gosh like a waterfall and it could be like ice cold or it could be like a mist and it could be warmer um, so it's like hydrotherapy and it is it's awesome it's yes. awesome um, so on the wish it's the biggest um, and it has an outdoor space as well with two hot tubs and like day beds you can see me sitting on a day bed there and those loungers are um, picture on the wish in that rainforest room. Um, you can get a day pass currently for port days, not sea days, and or you can get a length of cruise pass. And I will say the day passes are only if they don't sell enough length of cruise passes. And you can get the length of cruise passes now in the navigator app. We didn't used to be able to get those until before. Um, The prices vary, so I don't want to give you like a daily price because they vary by ship and they vary by itinerary. So I really can't give you a price, but I, because it's all changing, I don't know um, what ship and sailing you're going on, but I will tell you the wish is the most expensive. It was a little sticker shock for me. Um, I don't, I love the rainforest room. Don't get me wrong. I was really spoiled during COVID when you could rent it privately for two hours. That was like divine, but It's a skip it for me because I don't, I wouldn't spend enough time in there alone for it to be worth it. Even when I cruise without my children, like I'm happy just laying on a lounger in the sun up on the pool deck. So it's not, it doesn't add value to me. In the last couple of times I had gone in there because I had bought one, it was super packed. Oh no. Oh, I hate to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then the magic and the wonder do not have outside views in their rainforest room, but the other three ships do. I was going to say the packed nature is something I'm hearing more and more about, which is disappointing, but right. People complain about not being able to get in. So then Disney lets people in and then people complain that it's too packed. Like I feel bad. Sometimes it seems like Disney can't win, but you can't please everybody. 
Um, but I will say the experience as a whole, if you like relaxing, if you like to wake up early and go just like completely chill, it's such a cool experience to be able to do the rainforest room. I love it. Um, I don't do it every cruise, but when I do, it's just, it takes relaxation up a notch. Hunter and I are saying we can chill by the pool all day and be perfectly happy, chill on the beach all day, be perfectly happy. But there's just an added level of relaxation with the saunas and the spas and the um, the loungers. I will say that space on the wish, so, so beautiful. And with those sailings being shorter, it does. It didn't seem as packed to me when we yeah. were, you know, walking around. But definitely expensive. So this is something you would absolutely have to budget for. But oh, I love it. I love it. Ooh, I did cool. find that the yeah. FAQ on Disney Cruise Line website still mentions the chill teen spot um, for fourteen um, or thirteen to seventeen year olds. So I'm gonna say yes. Awesome. But my oldest is only eleven. So. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I would sense. have to call Disney Cruise Line to get a definitive answer. So I was going to say, if anybody, um, oh, somebody's boarding the dream next week. I'm so jealous. Ah, um, I'm boarding gonna... the dream two weeks. I was really excited. Oh, I'm so My excited. son and I are doing a mommy daughter trip, and it's going to be fun. Oh, that's so fun. I, I'm like, I want to go. Our mommy, you guys son, adopt mommy daughter, mommy son. I don't know. Yeah. We're going just the two of us. Well, I love that. Uh, and let's talk about this hot topic. These cabanas are, everybody's asking about them. What are these cabanas? Why are they so popular? Is it even realistic to get one? Let's dive in. All right. So if you can get one, I think it's worth it. But here's the reality of it. These cabanas go fast. Um, they pretty much are always scooped up by concierge. There is only... Um, a certain amount of cabanas and it's far fewer than even concierge rooms on each ship so those guests normally have them all booked up there is a rare chance that you could get on the wait list on board and get one um but again if concierge guests are on the wait list on board they get priority so even if a, like if a concierge guest got on the wait list after you they still get priority um so if Having a cabana as a priority for you, the really only way to almost guarantee one is to be concierge. But to put it in perspective, on the Wish, there are 74 concierge staterooms, um, and there is only 21 family cabanas, and then there's a total like of 28 on the... So then there are um, seven more on the Adult Beach. Yes. Yes. And they are... Or six. Yeah, seven more. Yeah, I was going to say, these are such hot commodities. And, you know, Hunter, I know, right, my answer on this is skip it. I personally don't see the value. I don't, you know, if I'm going to go to the beach, there's plenty of umbrellas. There's plenty of shade. There's plenty of hammocks, plenty of chairs. Like, I'm fine just parking myself on the beach. But why do you see value in getting a cabana on Castaway? Um, my daughter and my husband don't like to be in the sun like at all um they will lay in here all day so they that's one thing but so we if i for them if i want to spend every waking second on that castaway like we're usually the last ones on castaway they're like get out um so that's the only way i really get it if we had a cabana i really enjoy being able to eat in there away from everybody else um having the safe not having the lug towels from the ship concierge guests are like if you have a cabana they will take you on the golf cart straight to your cabana you don't have to get on the tram um or anything you can just get a golf cart from concierge and go straight to your cabana so i love that they are stocked with water and sodas fresh fruit granola bars chips um so you can really not have to go get any snacks um, you also have an attendant to take care of you um, if you need to order drinks or if somebody needs to go to the bathroom and it's a little bit of ways. Um, if somebody wants to go back to the ship separately, um, they'll take a golf cart. You can take a golf cart back to the ship. Um, it's just super convenient. And I am very much a 
luxury vacationer. I like all the added extra conveniences. So I just really enjoy it having our own space and they are on separate beach. It's the same beach, but it's um, secluded on a family beach. Um, there is a fence. So only cabana guests are on that side of the beach. That just means less people. And I like that. Um, they also come with floats and rafts. Um, if you are on the family beach, they're in a family cabana. There are sand toys. Um, you get you get one hour bike rental complimentary. You get snorkel equipment complimentary. Um, it comes with sunscreen in there as well. So you don't have to look off your sunscreen from the ship. And so does concierge. Up in the concierge lounge, there is sunscreen and facial spray and sunglass cleaner. Your sunglasses cleaner. Um, so those are also additional amenities that you get to enjoy. I was going to say, there's a lot that comes with these concierge experiences and the cabanas. Every time I talk to Hunter about it, I'm just about sold. So if you are on the fence, talk to Hunter, reach out, let her help you not only kind of plan your crew, actually plan your cruise, but she can also help with some of these additional activities. And Wayne, if it makes sense for you and your family. Um, and we have I just want to put a, you. go ahead. So does concierge make accessibility easier for your family? Um, yes and no. So the golf cart is definitely helpful um, for Castaway. Um, the tram, my because of my husband's prosthetic, he can't bend his leg as most as much as most people would. So the tram is uncomfortable. Um, also, walking in the prosthetic uh, with it after it's wet can rub his skin and that's also uncomfortable. So the having that um, golf cart is super helpful. And then also in the shows at night, concierge gets first, gets to go into the shows first. Um, so being able to get an aisle seat or like front row so he can have his leg because it's his right leg. So if he sits on the aisle, he can kind of not have to bend it as much. That's super helpful for him. So I would say yes in those aspects. Um, and then also we just, both of us are kind of the same, like um, some overstimulation and other things that we just like to be able to retreat um, and being in the lounge and just being like in a little intimate area is super helpful for us. That's such great perspective. And I think that's also a reason that having a travel agent is so important because what's important to my family, what's important to you who are watching right now, what's important to your family, it's going to be different. And that's okay. We're all allowed to vacation differently, cruise differently. But having that experienced travel agent who's actually sailed on board a Disney cruise ship, and not only just one of them, but all of them, and has had these experiences, Hunter can help paint that picture of does this make sense for you and your family so that you're maximizing your time on board? You know, Hunter wants you to have the best vacation possible so that you, you know, keep having vacations, right? So Absolutely. reach out to her, talk through if these things are going to make sense for you. And um, I just want to put it in perspective. Like just because we've had sailed concierge doesn't mean we haven't done the other end of the spe spectrum. We have sailed in an inside state room. We've sailed in an ocean view state room. We've sailed in the Verana state room. Yes. And even after my husband needs the successful stateroom, we've sailed in regular staterooms and had to just kind of ask for some accommodations, like a shower chair. Um, and it was tight and it wasn't great. But we were happy to be on board and Disney does everything they can um, to make you comfortable. Um, so we've, we've really experienced it all. Um, so I was going to say, if accessibility is a concern for you or for your family, that is something that Hunter specializes in. Reach out to her. That is the link um, to her page on the DCL community site. And she, she can help coordinate and make sure that you guys are all taken care of. And um, just speaking of pricing in general for things. So the cabana prices, do you know what those are off the top of your head? Um, so they, I know the Serenity Bay one that we just did. There was seven of us. Um, so that one is normally... Three ninety nine, and it, it goes by season. So oh, good to um, know. Okay, we were on Please board in March. Yes, it was three ninety nine ninety five plus gratuity plus fifty dollars per person for anybody over four. Um, 
And I want to say off the top of my head, the family can is around $7.99 for six. Um, and if you have over six, it's fifty dollars extra person. And those like Serenity Bay and the regular family cabanas will hold up to ten. Um, and then the grand family, I want which holds twenty, I believe, is a thousand ninety nine dollars plus gratuity, and that's for up to ten people. And any over ten is fifty dollars extra per person. It's around there, um, but the prices are different. I believe it's. April to September and then September to the end of March. Um, so they consider like April to September, I'm almost positive that's the season, is a higher cost. Okay, good to know. Okay, I actually learned something new. But I have all of those like actual details like on my computer. Like if somebody asked me that, you know, one of my clients, I would be able to give them the exact information. Um, and we yeah. always call Disney Cruise Line just to make sure um, since we had the last update, to make sure nothing has changed. Yeah, I was going to say that is one of my favorite perks about working with the travel agent is not having to call Disney. Love that. Um, and then do you remember how much your pedicure was? Uh, thanks, Memphis. It's beautiful. Um, I believe it was around $100 with tip. And same for the blowout. So the pedicure was definitely more than I would have played at home. Um, but my toenail polish was chipping and I couldn't see it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> and I then um, the blowout was actually less than I would have paid at home. Good to know. Okay. What about verandas? Short cruises? Skip it for me. Um, you don't spend that much time in the room if you're on a three and four night cruise. So I would say skip it. Um, once in a lifetime trip go for it um yeah. if you can but there's so many variables to my answer based on your family's preferences so i i can't give you all of the variations but those are a couple once in a lifetime trip it's worth it short cruises not worth it yeah i was gonna say for me if it's a matter of like going on the cruise or not going on the cruise it, it, skip it right not worth not going on the cruise because you need to have a veranda um but again just like hunter said depends on your priorities you know my family we are very tall and we're traveling from out of state so there's a lot of suitcases there's a lot of luggage so having that extended that family deluxe veranda might make sense in some cases you know if there's a guarantee rate there's a lot of different situations so depending on when you're looking to sail reach out to Hunter, let her price out the different options for you. Because when we were sailing on the wish, it was like $200 more for a veranda that weekend sold. Sign me up. Give me the extra, uh, the extra space. Give me the extra leg room. I love it. If given the option, I love having a veranda, but I'd mostly rather like go to the rainforest room or go to Remy. Um, my priorities tend to lie around food. <laughs> We spent seven days on the fantasy last month or earlier this month. And I'm going to tell you, I think I went on the veranda two times and it was honestly to get content for my social media pages. So, yeah, yeah it's so really it's dependent. Kind of, yeah, there's something about having that cup of coffee or a mimosa or a glass of wine out there and the tranquility and, you know, depending on seasickness, right? There, if you have questions on yeah. this, business, definitely talk to Hunter, but, um, you know, and your doctor, always important, but there's so, there's no bad staterooms on board. I stand by that. All the staterooms are going to take great care of you. You're going to have a great um, stateroom host or hostess, but there's no bad staterooms, but there is going to be one that's best for you and your family. So that's where having a professional travel agent like Hunter comes into play because she can help your family kind of navigate what that looks like for you. Absolutely. Um, and I, yeah, if you guys have, Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think we got most of the questions, right? I was just scrolling back through them. Do you have any, you see any that we didn't answer? Um, does the rainforest room close early on the wish compared to the other ships? I don't know. Um, I would typically the rainforest room, I believe, is open till 10 p.m. This the salon, the spa is typically 10 p.m. Um, so I don't know if the outdoor space closes early on the wish. Like I said, I don't think the rainforest room is worth it on the wish. Yes. So. 
-hmm. But the Navigator app has all of the times where um, every, all the times where one um, salon, salon, the spa, um, restaurants, bars and lounges, like they're opening and closing times. And sometimes they change. So even if I were to tell you one thing, you may get on the ship and it's a completely different thing. I was going to say, people will ask like, oh, can you let me know what's going on this week on, on board? But it can change week to week. Like on our sailing a couple of weeks, a couple months ago, there were multiple famous people like A-list celebrities that were on board and they were doing a, an event, right? And if we had overplanned our cruise, if we had booked things and tried to, you know, get the navigator beforehand, we would have missed out on getting to meet these people, right? Like that's such a cool experience that you only get when you are able to go with the flow, even just a little bit. Um, and I'm looking at, so got questions here. Um, if I'm doing an Alaska cruise, is a veranda a must? Again, I think this is personal preference. Um, <laughs> I'm going to find out because we are um, doing that this summer. I have to be careful because my kids are here. <laughs> um, I'm so it's a surprise. But, Don't tell Hunter's kids. <laughs> and we're doing inside. So, and I know people are like, no, don't do that. But um, it was a $6,000 price difference. Wow. $6,000. And I was just like, I, we're going to yeah. try it. We've yeah. done it inside before. Um, and I, we just have a lot of trips to share. And I just didn't want to pay $6,000 more for a veranda. So we're going to find out. I will tell you, we're going to try to upgrade at the port um, if we can. But if we can't, you know what? We'll take the extra steps and go out on to the the deck because to be honest we don't spend a lot of time on our rooms our yeah. kids don't nap anymore um i'm an early riser we are typically out until like midnight when the adult stuff closes and the kids club closes and we're really only in our room to get ready for the day and then to clean up before dinner yeah i was gonna say people so, don't realize how little time you spend in your state room so I am so excited. If you to be here. like to spend time in your state room and sit on a veranda and read a book, then yeah, it's probably a must for you. But I'm not that person. So that's why these trips, even though it's just a cruise, people say this like it's just a cruise. Like you know, there's not that many choices. It really is, and not no one vacation fits all. I say this. I'm pretty sure every time we do. Yes. Yes, it's so true. Everything, especially when, you know, when you're working with Hunter, she can help customize this vacation specifically for you and your family. Um, and if we have, if reservations are connected um, and you book Palo brunch and then the other room decides to book it at the same time, are you seated at the same table? How do you connect reservations or can you request separate tables if you are connected? So if you are connected and you want to be at the same table, one person can book for everybody. If your rooms are connected, when you go in a book and activity, it's going to pop up everybody's names that you're connected to and you can click them. There's like check boxes. If you do not want to be at the same table, you need to book separately. It doesn't matter if they pick the same day and same time. If you're booked on separate reservations, you go into your Disney Cruise Line account and only select yours and your spouse or yours and your mom or whoever's name. That reservation is only for you. If you go in and select everybody's name that you're connected to, then it's for everybody. You're all going to be together. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. No, that definitely does. It matters whose names you're checking on there. And I know yeah. we didn't get to talk about it, but what about the photo package? One, do you think it's worth it? And two, if you have multiple staterooms, does every stateroom need to get it? Okay, so do I think it's worth it? You know what? I have the Instagram. So let's see what Instagram says because I, we did put this on there. It just didn't make it to the slideshow apparently. Um, do I think it's worth it? It depends. Um, Instagram, 74% said it's worth it. 26% said skip it. Um, so what I like to do is I put it on there. You don't get charged for the photo, photo package until you're on board. Go the last night, look at all your photos. Do you have enough photos that you think it's worth it? Or do you only have enough photos that you like that you might want to downgrade your package? So this is what we did the last cruise. There are only 10 pictures that I liked. So 
we went to the desk. We we're like, hey, there's only 10 pictures we like. We want to downgrade at the 10 picture package, which was 149, and get rid of the photo package, which was 249. So That's we cool. saved $100. But if you go on there and there's 30 pictures that you like, then it's going to be worth it. But here's the key when you're looking at them, they give you a QR code that you can download them on your phone while you're still on the board. Don't don't do that unless you know you're going to keep the regular photo package. Because if you start downloading them, they can see that, and they will not like they will not refund it. Like you can't say, "Oh, I didn't," you know, "I'm not going to use any of these photos," because they can see you downloaded them. Yes. Oh, so that's... my recommendation is to add it to your account because it's fifty dollars cheaper if you add it before. And then wait until the last day to make your decision on if you're gonna keep it or have it refunded. Yeah, you can downgrade the photo package on the wish as long as you could have not downloaded any photos. That's the key. You could not download any photos. And I love um, the point that you shared about um, booking the package ahead of time because you'll save money on board if you book the photo package before you get on the ship. Great way to save a little money. Um, then we have a question here about how long is the walk from the ship to the beach on Castaway? So it depends on what beach you're going to. There's two family beaches. Um, the first one is obviously the first one you're going to get to. Um, the second one's a little, about five to eight minutes further. I would say if you're going to the first one, 10 to 12 minutes. If you're going to the second one, 15 to 18 minutes walking. Yes. Now, if you're a speed walker, it's going to take less than that. I'm saying this is probably like an average walk. If you're Toting kids along without a stroller, probably a little bit longer. <laughs> Plus, yeah. there's characters along the way. So, if they want to stop and say hi to characters, that's definitely going to take up time. Yes. And shopping, too. People forget about the shopping and the hair braiding. And there's different places to maybe stop and get a drink along the way. Maybe do a little castaway bar hop. Love that. Uh, and then we had, I think, just one more question. I need to find it again here. And then we can let everybody go. But this has been awesome and your friend hannah said hello and we have somebody who wants to talk to you all about your disney tattoos because they're obsessed oh my goodness where was this question i'm so sorry i just had it and i scrolled away from it let me see if i can find one that we didn't answer um oh my gosh i'm so sorry you guys where was this question oh is the kids club worth it i mean the kids club's free so there's no harm in trying it, right? Yeah. Um, my kids love it. But here's the beautiful thing about the kids' club. If your kids aren't having a good time, they'll try to redirect them for the first like half hour. After that, if your kids say they want you, they're going to message you and say, hey, this is a notification for whatever your child's name is. They would like to be picked up. I'm going to be honest. Sometimes, if it's only been like a half hour, I ignore that first message and wait for the second message to come. Um, because they won't send a second, like a lot of times, uh, if I ignore the first one, she'll play for another hour and then they'll send the second one because some friend walked in because I've had multiple times where I drop her off, she's bored, she's like, I want my mom to come pick me up and I get down there and she's like, oh, a friend came, I don't want to pick up. You know, so, um, <laughs> you know your if, kids. Yeah, if your kid is like adamant they want to leave, they're going to they're gonna message you multiple times. Um, but yeah, I mean, my kids have always liked it. My uh, son is older and he's in the tween club now. He loves that. We think it's great to have give him a little responsibility um, and make wise decisions because if he leaves Edge, because it's come in and out as you please, he has to text us and let us know. And he does. Um, so that's a great way to kind of teach him responsibility when they can't really go anywhere. Yeah. Oh, and um, last, last question for you. I promise. Magic bands. Worth it or not worth it? Not worth it. If you have them from the parks, um, sure, you can use them. We haven't used them a single time. Yes. Um, and I have a whole jar up there full of mag magic bands. And we haven't used them. Um, you know, the key to the world card is so convenient. And either way, you have to have the key to the world card. So I just don't think the extra expense of magic bands, heck, I think they're at like $45 a piece now ish if you had like five people in your family that adds up right then you could be spending that on an excursion or a spa treatment or anything of the other things we talked about today so i don't think they're worth it because you get the key of the world card anyways that's my personal preference 
I couldn't agree more. Put the money towards something else amazing on board. You do not need it. I, you get the convenience of having, you know, the the smart technology where you just scan it. But I love them for Walt the Disney World, but I just don't see the need for it on the cruise. Yes, I totally agree. Uh, this was awesome. I had so much fun. If you guys are ready to plan your next Disney cruise, or if you're thinking, or if you're sailing soon, you're going to get that placeholder, make sure you reach out to Hunter, transfer that placeholder over, or just start the conversation about what that cruise, that Disney cruise vacation would look like for you and your family. Or maybe it's an all-inclusive, or maybe it's another cruise line. Hunter is so experienced, and she's here to help you plan that perfect, perfect vacation for you and your family. So thank you all so much for joining. Hunter, thank you for all your time. Yes. This was great. And we are so excited. And we will see all y'all on board real soon. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.